Okay, I'll make a start then. Um, <clears throat> good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ewan Ferguson. I work for the International Office uh, in the International Student Support Team. I hope you found today so far informative. Uh, this session is about keeping healthy, so this is not me going to be telling people how to keep healthy because I'm not really a specimen of perfect health myself. But this is really more about how to access certain things like medical treatment in the UK, dentistry in the UK, um, one or two other aspects about being an international student in any country outside of your normal context. So things that we just want to sort of mention and ways that you can mitigate it. So things like culture shock, dealing with the cold, which is actually a factor. I know we joke about the weather quite a lot, but there are ways that you can handle the, the cold that will come our way in the darkness. Um, <clears throat> and also a little bit about, uh, well, basically the different level of support that's available throughout the university. So. Without further ado, um, can I just get a show of hands? Who's heard of the NHS, the NHS? So that's pretty good, a reasonable number of people. Well, basically, the NHS is the National Health Service of the UK. It is something that people in the UK are very, very proud of. Uh, it's a free health service open to everybody who's going to be here for six months or longer as an international student. Um, if you're here for less than six months, then you can still access it. Um, if you're an EU citizen, you can access it uh, right from the point that you enter the country. But how do you actually access it? Well, <clears throat> effectively, you need to register, first of all. And the top tip I would give from today is don't wait till you're sick to register with a doctor. Uh, do it while you're well, do it this week, next week if you can. We've got full details in both the Getting Started Guide, which you maybe hopefully have received, and also in our student services here to help booklet, which is available from the desk just outside on page six and seven. So effectively what you need to do is register. Um, this involves filling out a fairly straightforward form. If you've got any sort of details about medical conditions that you currently have, it's useful to bring that along to the medical practice so that they're aware of it. Um, <clears throat> if you have any medication that you're currently taking, you may not get exactly the same medication in the UK, but you may get something similar. So take details of that along as well to your registration appointment. The form for this registration is available on the university website, and I can guarantee you there'll be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of copies of it available also uh, in the registration, um, this, the uh, medical registration at the basement of 6 Bristol Square, um, which is open all this week, Monday to Friday. It's also useful to have your student card, but that's not 100% essential if it's going to take you a few days to get that. Um, but certainly, <clears throat> take your passport with your visa. If you've got a spouse with you, or a wife, husband, or a partner, and any children, it's usually quite handy if you either both go together or all go at the same time, just to make sure you get registered um, with the same GP. Now that kind of brings us on to the next question is, where do you register? Which practice do you go for? Well, the university has got a medical practice. It's a very large one, probably the largest in the city. It certainly covers the largest area of any of the medical practices in the city. But in your Getting Started Guide, we also give you a list of ones which are kind of centrally located to where the student accommodation is. So you can go to any one of these. Um, you can use the medical practice at the university. It's certainly you know, open for you to do so. Um, but if you have one which is closer to where you live or you're going to get a registration appointment more quickly, then you can certainly use any of the ones that are listed here. So, <clears throat> what does the, the GP do? That would be where you went if you weren't feeling particularly well, wanted to get some uh, advice about how, how to sort of fix yourself or if you want to get tested for, for uh, any illnesses you may be having. Um, it's not normally a medical um, emergency place. We have other services for that. So it's kind of like your first step if you wanted to go and be referred somewhere else. You can also have a look here on nhs24.com. It's a very useful website. It gives you all kinds of information about medical practices that are in your area, um, dental practices that are in your area. I'll come on to that in a moment. Um, and also a few bits and pieces about how to contact emergency medical care in the UK. So as I say, um, all this uh, service is free at the point of use. So when you go, as long as you've registered, then you shouldn't have to pay for anything relating to your, uh, certainly your physical health. <clears throat> so moving on to the two things that you probably will have to pay for at some point in the UK, 
uh, dentistry and eye care. Um, first of all, dentistry, again, we've got a list here in this booklet and in the Getting Started Guide of places that you can go uh, to register with a dentist. You have to register with a dentist. So registering with the GP doesn't actually also cover you for registering with a dentist. You have to do it separately. Um, there are some dentists that are NHS provided, but there's not that many of them. It's more frequently a, a private um, business, as it were. <clears throat> but it is normally subsidised if they do NHS treatment, so it's not going to be terribly expensive, but they will have a fixed price list, and that's how much it costs across the UK to get that particular treatment on the NHS. It can be quite difficult to find an NHS dentist, to be honest, but if you go on to NHS 24, you will see any that are currently registering patients, so it's constantly updated all the time. Um, if you're a visiting student, so I mean that in terms of you're here under six months, you can uh, go onto this website, or sorry, this phone number here, and just double check your eligibility. There's a lot of countries where the UK has bilateral agreements for emergency medical treatment or emergency dental treatment, but that would only be if you're, say, for example, from outside the EU. If you're from the EU, you're literally covered for everything from, from day one. Moving on, eye care. <coughs> Hopefully everyone can see this slide. Um, eye examinations are free in Scotland. If you need to get your eyes tested, they are free, so you don't need to sort of uh, pay for that particular service. But any work that they do, any sort of lenses they make for you, any glasses they make, obviously uh, will be charged and isn't normally subsidised um, unless you have got an exemption certificate for the NHS. But if you want to get your eyes tested, any optometrist will, will, will see you, will sort of do the eye test, will uh, come out with a prescription if you needed it. Um, if you have got lenses and you need to get repeat prescriptions done, they can help you there as well. But it's just a case of going anywhere. You don't necessarily have to register with an optician. You just sort of go along to the, the shop that they run. So this is just a very quick sort of summary of emergency services, and hopefully you won't need them. Um, but uh, we have also covered them here in the Getting Started Guide and in Student Services Guide as well. But effectively, um, <clears throat> one thing to look out for is accident and emergency. You'll hear people talking about this. This is what the people of the UK would call emergency room. Uh, so A&E is basically the short of it. Um, that's for any severe emergencies. You break your leg playing football, you would go to A&E. Don't wait to see your doctor the next day. Um, out of hours doctors, again, this NHS 24 website is invaluable. You can go on there, you can find details of which doctors you can contact in the middle of the night. You can actually even speak to sort of nurses who can talk through your symptoms and give you recommendations of what you need to do. Um, similarly, there is something here for dentists, for dentistry work, and um, if you're unregistered, there is a centre quite close to the ECA, Edinburgh College of Art, uh, called the Chalmers Dental Centre. You don't need an appointment, you just turn up and they will see you there, but they will give you sort of emergency treatment. Effectively, they'll patch you up until someone else can spend time on your teeth. So uh, that's one thing to look out for as well. As I say, hopefully you won't need to use them. Um, the two emergency numbers in the UK, you can use 112 or 999. Um, hopefully that will get you through to either the police, the fire brigade or an ambulance if you need one. But uh, that's the two numbers you can use. And I'll pass over to my colleague, Jane O'Loughlin, who's going to explain a little bit about some specific situations for studying in the UK. Jane. Okay. OK, hopefully you can all hear me. Um, I'm sure Ewan's already said this, but we would like to welcome you to Edinburgh. Um, it's going to be a very exciting time over the next wee while for you all. I'm, I'm quite jealous. I have to be honest, I <laughs> quite like going away and getting into a new place myself. But in saying that, you might find over the next couple of weeks that there's some things that might affect you and they are very specific to people in your position who are moving to a new country and moving to a new culture. Um, and one of the things is culture shock, which is something that most people will experience to a certain degree. It will affect some people more than it affects others, but you might find yourself uh, feeling a little bit down, um, having sleepless nights or, or feeling a little bit stressed out, and you, m you might not identify why. And it could be that you're experience, experiencing a little bit of culture shock. Now, the important thing to remember is that it's completely normal. And there's certain things that make you experience it. 
first of all, obviously, coming away to a new place for the first wee while, you're probably going to feel a little bit homesick before you start getting into things and making friends. Um, that's natural. It doesn't last very long. Trust me, once you've made some friends and you've got used to the place, you'll find by the end of the time you don't want to leave. You don't, you're not going to want to go home. But in the meantime, it's important to remember that it, it is temporary. There are some other things that you might find, you won't, they won't register consciously with you, but you might find that they're, they're affecting you. For example, um, you might find that people have a different sense of personal space in Scotland. So they might stand a little bit further away than, than makes you comfortable, or they might stand a little bit closer than makes you comfortable. Um, but it's just something to get used to. You might find the accent is quite difficult to understand for a little while, and also you'll get you'll 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 get into that. I had that myself. I moved to Edinburgh last year, and my accent isn't the best. It's the easiest to understand, but some Scottish people who I talked to, I just couldn't understand the word they were saying for the first few weeks. But it's okay. You'll get used to it. You will. It's fine. Um, some of the other things you might find are a little bit different are um, the, the way people socialise in the UK and particularly um, in Scotland. You'll find that people a, a lot of the time going, th the thing to do when you're socialising is going to the pub and having a drink. And that's fine, it's great, but it, it doesn't have to be the thing that you do. If you don't want to do that, there are plenty of other things to do. Edinburgh is a great city, there's lots going on. And there's lots of other people who are in the same position as you are. So we'll talk a little bit about the things that might um, affect you and how you can, how you can combat that. Um, I think the first thing that we should say is it's really important to stay in contact with your friends and family at home. They're going to be worried about you just as much as you're worried about them. So to let them know that you're OK. Um, make sure you get on. I mean, there's plenty of ways, cheap ways to, to stay in contact with people outside of the UK. Um, you'll see downstairs we have a, a guy from Information Services who's helping students set up Wi-Fi on their devices. So if you have iPads, tablets, smartphones, whatever you've got, go down and see him. He'll help you get um, connected to the university Wi-Fi. And then you'll be able to use Skype or FaceTime or whatever you like to, to contact home. Um, the second thing is, you know, don't be overly concerned with the people at home. There are, you, you have a wonderful opportunity here to meet people from all over the world, experience people, you know, backgrounds from, from everywhere, um, and get yourself involved in university life, which is really exciting. So make sure that you make friends here. Get out and join clubs or societies. Make friends with the people that you're in the room around you right now. And they'll look out for you just as much as you should be looking out for them. So look out for the people who you're living with, your friends. Make sure that they're feeling okay. And, you know, join together and you'll make each other feel better. Um, it's important um, to make sure that you ask for help as well. We'll talk about the, the different services that are available at the university in a minute. Um, but just remember that you're not on your own. You might feel a bit lonely and you might feel a bit isolated at times, but you're not. You're not on your own and you can. there's plenty of things you can do to help yourself. Um, so one of the things that you might find whenever you're here for the first few weeks is that the food is, is different to it is in your home country. Um, Scotland has a reputation for being a nation of unhealthy eaters. Um, it's not entirely true, it's absolutely not. And um, you, you do have, they do have a, a reputation for eating fried food and deep fried Mars bars and deep fried pizzas and deep fried everything there is going. But, you know, there is actually quite a lot of uh, food, healthy food out there. And also, you'll find that there are loads of ethnic supermarkets. So you can go to those and buy food from your home country and just make sure. I mean, basically what you want to do is you're all sensible. I don't need to tell you, eat fruit and vegetables, <laughs> you know, but um, you know, we were talking earlier about going to the pub. One, a great thing to do, and we find that it's a brilliant thing for international students to, uh, and a way to make friends, is cook dinner. Cook dinner for yourself and cook dinner for your friends. So why not try cooking a, a dish from your home country and then going to your friend's house and getting them to cook you something from their home country? It's a great way to socialise on a, on a cold night. So that takes us into the next thing, the weather in Scotland. Sounds terribly negative, but 
the weather isn't good over the over the winter. I'm sure you're all aware of that having before having moved here. But it does get dark and it does get cold and it does get very windy in Edinburgh. So you don't need to it's not going to, to take over your life. It's not going to stop you getting out there and making friends and doing things. But just make sure that you that you're dressing appropriately. Um, layers are important here, so it's, it's a good way to do it. Make sure you have lots of layers because it's going to be hot inside and it's going to be cold outside. So you'll be taking your clothes on and off all the time. Um, you can, I mean, there's lots of things to do on a cold, wet win winter night. You know, you can cozy up with your friends and watch movies or you can just get out and, and do it, put your waterproofs on. Make sure you get a good pair of shoes that are waterproof and a coat with a hood preferably because umbrellas aren't much use here in the wind <laughs> so but you'll be fine and the important thing is you know the weather can make you there, there's a thing called season of seasonal affective disorder and it's not something that just international students feel it's uh, I, I experience it people from Scotland experience it but again you know just remember that it might that might be what it is and if you get at, if you stay active and get out and stay with your friends, it'll really not affect you very much at all. Okay, so staying active, exercise. Obviously, everybody knows that exercise is important. It's more for some people than it is for others. Um, but you'll see downstairs that the Centre for Sport and Exercise are have a stall downstairs, and they're going to be doing tours at half past three. So if you want to go down and have a look at the exercise facilities. They'll be able to bring you down and tell you all about it. Um, there's lots of clubs, sports clubs at the university. So you'll be able to um, join a club if you're into that kind of thing. If you like playing sports, um, you could join a team. But they've also got loads of uh, different classes. So you can do dance or Pilates, yoga, any of those kind of things that, that might just get you out of the house, keep your body healthy, get those endorphins going, happy, happy hormones, and make you feel a little bit better on those cold nights. Okay, And also, getting out and going to classes or joining teams is a really good way to meet people and make new friends. Finally, asking for help. There are so many people here at the university who are just here to help you, like me, for example. <laughs> We're from the, the International Students Ad Student Advisory Service, and we are particularly here. Our whole job is just to help international students. Where we have, we, there's a lot of time you can see us. We have appointments between half nine and half twelve every day. And we also, during term time, during normal term time outside of September and October, have drop-in services from 2 till 4 on Mondays and Wednesdays. You can contact us by email, you can give us a call, but we are here to help you specifically. So if you'd like to come and see us at any time, if you're feeling down, if you have any kind of problem, or even if you just want to come and tell us how great a time you're having, you can come and see us and we, we, we love to see you. But there's plenty of other services as well. So. Um, the University Students Association, uh, the USA, you call it, um, they have an advice place. Um, and it's basically uh, the, the Students Association. It's run by students. There's staff members there too, but they're, they're there to help you. So the advice place advises on a whole range of issues, anything at all really that you'd like to go and see them about. They're there as well, and they're based in Potter Row. Um, you'll see downstairs there's a stall and I think Yola is down there at the minute um, and disability services uh, if you have any kind of thing that would affect your learning or affect you moving around the university at all you can go and see them and they have you know they, they're there they're ex they have a special expertise in helping students and al allowing you to um, have the best experience that you can. The counselling services are fantastic if you are feeling stressed around exam time or um, if you have anything, if you're feeling low at all. They have, they have great, great, um, loads of different things, loads of different drop-in sessions um, and you can, you can contact them for a chat with anybody. You might have seen, you'll see on me here, that uh, you, these little dots that are going around, you should go down and get one of those, it tells you how you're feeling. So a minute ago, mine was black while I was outside and it's apparently tense, but now it's okay, it's gone to green, so it means I'm involved. <laughs> but there you go, so go and get one of those and 
you'll, uh, you'll, you, you, you'll just tell you how you're feeling during the week. And then finally, the health service. Ewan has um, talked about it, about uh, uh, registering with the doctor. But the health service are there, and um, they'll be around. You can register with the doctor between 9 and 4 all this week in Bristol uh, Square. So if anybody would like to ask any questions, feel free and come and see us at the end of the session. Otherwise, um, all of the, the support services that we've talked about are all uh, displaying downstairs. So feel free to go and um, talk to any of them as well, and they'll be happy to help you. OK, so again, have a great time during your studies here. And uh, thank you.